Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good afternoon and for being here with your testimony. Uh, we've heard quite a bit on this subject matter starting almost, I think, 11 a.m. this morning. And the questions that I asked Senator Bai, and for which obviously I would like to get a response from your perspective on the same subject matter, which uh, we talked about earlier, was due process and public input, was that a part of what happened before you were able to say, I'm not sure what the deal is the right choice of word. I heard, I heard the exchange between Representative Belsito and you all, and I'm not sure what is the right choice of word there. But whatever agreement, whatever, whatever agreement is there now, the, the, what I've heard, and I would like to be corrected if I'm wrong, I would love to be corrected, is that due process did not happen public input was not there, and everybody, the town of Bloomfield, was caught totally unawares of what was going to happen in their backyard. I, I, I can't speak for the town of Bloomfield. What I can speak to you is in terms of the MDC. And the MDC, um, as I mentioned, the Great Ponds Project in Windsor uh, in 2010, and we knew that, that they're not coming. And for whatever reason, we have no idea, but we know that this Sewer surcharge, although we have the lowest water rate in the state of Connecticut, the sewer surcharge is becoming uh, a problem for our uh, rate payers and, and recruiting development. So what I can tell you is this, is that we created a rate. Um, I mentioned it f at five of my meetings uh, since July. We've had seven public hearings relative to the rate structure. The rate structure does not say specifically for Niagara. It's for a it's for a, a consumption amount that we felt was fair and competitive. Our rate reduction is minimal compared to, if you look at every major metropolitan area across the country, they promote their safe yield and capacity for, for industrial use. Because as I mentioned earlier, industrial consumption is going down across the country. And so the only, because Dr. Palmer, if everyone remembers the water, uh, the summit, the water summit uh, at the Yukon Law Library back in 2014, uh, after the issue was associated with the Yukon Stores campus, uh, what he showed in his, and it's in our fact sheet, he showed that, that water consumption is going down even though population is going up. And we've seen exactly the same thing. So the only possibility for us to increase our consumption without increasing our rates is to have a structure like others that promotes more development uh, and supports our town. Uh, uh, address your direct question. Did we follow all of the responsibilities to post public meetings, have public hearings? Yes, we did. Thank you. That, that was, I'm glad you answered that in, in, a, in such a succinct way because I, I needed to hear right. whether due process was followed or not. Uh, I, I want to thank you for, I heard you say that you're going to be investing uh, about 30 million in Glastonbury. Yes. And I appreciate that very much. I'm sure our town is appreciative of whatever you're planning to do with, with updating our waterways. The other question that I had was, you know, you already referred to that, and I think I have the answer, but I just want to be sure that this rate that was given to this company is really nothing to do with that company and the internal negotiations you have. It's a flat rate that you have based on the water consumption. For anyone who meets that criteria, you have to be a member town because you have to have water and sewer, obviously, uh, but you... Um, Yes, if you meet those criteria within that ordinance, you get the same rate. And as I mentioned, the cogen plan on Capitol Avenue, uh, if they do what they did last year, which is exceed that 500,000 gallons per day, as they did in last August, they will also receive that rate. So this rate that, that people are thinking is they got a preferential rate is really not true. It is just the rate that you have established regardless of who the consumer That's is, correct, right. as long as you meet those thresholds. That's, That's correct. correct. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. And, and my final question is on the, on the concerns that people had that we might be, we might see a supply emergency 
and then we talked about the rate, you know, the level coming down all the way to 10 percent, you know, before we declare an emergency. And obviously, that's a concern for for all of us. And could you just elaborate yes, sure. as to what, quote unquote, according to you, is a water emergency where water will not be given to this <coughs> to the industry? But will go to the to the towns, obviously, even though they're not such volume consumers. Sure. So I have here our our drought triggers, like every water company has. It's part of our water supply plan. Again, reviewed and approved by all the state agencies. And uh, uh, and I would say that it it could be our fault for trying to articulate this. But but what we're trying to explain to everyone is, at no time, in our drought triggers, do we stop any public, including residential, from using potable water uh, for drinking, for bathing, for brushing your teeth, at no time during these drought triggers. The, the group that really only gets restricted from actually you cannot use water is the industrial user, which starts to be monitored at 40 percent, which is 1965 drought. But in 1965, the, the um, reservoirs were at 40 percent capacity and that 40 percent capacity of 40 billion gallons is is a year's worth of water supply i mean that's what you we have to make everyone understand is how how mass these reservoirs are we are not providing water to anyone whether it's niagara or any of our customers through the aquifer it's a surface body water reservoir which has 31,000 acres surrounding it, and the water, the rain, leaches into the reservoir, and the ground and the forest is used as a filter. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have class AA water. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, my final question. As I'm listening to this conversation, which, as I said earlier, began quite some time ago, it appears to me I did miss some of your early part of your testimony. It was uh, at another meeting, and I apologize for that. But, I, but from what I'm hearing from you and the answers that we've all been getting back and forth this afternoon, that this bill that is here today in front of us on which we are discussing is something that you are, you are all doing anyway and, and that you would have no objection you know, if we just codify this and move this forward. Am I right, or do you have some parts of this that you have strong objections to? I did miss that part, so maybe it's redundant, but I would appreciate that answer. answer. <clears throat> no. um, well, so I understand that this is draft and there's a number of changes. Um, we, we, we are not allowed, and this, came, this is one of the first questions that we had in the, in the uh, January time frame, was um, there was an expectation that the MDC would shut off the water to Niagara, for example, or any industrial customer uh, before we shut off the water to our residents. We do not shut off water to our residents. We do ask in those 75 percent, 53 percent, we're asking the municipalities and, and, and residential customers to please don't, you know, wash your car, don't water your lawn, because as you can imagine, in terms of economic development, if we were to say, uh, we'd rather have uh, the ability to wash our cars than to send people home at work because we're shutting the water off to our industrial customers, I don't think our towns would be very happy. We do not have the authority. The MDC does not have the authority to shut anyone off. What we have the authority to do is at 40% capacity, like 1965, our drought triggers tell us that we will go with DPH, we'll start to monitor the flows into the high industrial users, and then when we get down below that, we actually will restrict the water to those industrial users. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you.